uh, SOLIDWORKS PDM macros using dispatch. My name is Jim Kribbersheen. I work for Infor, which is a computer-aided technology company that focuses on PLM solutions, uh, sales, service, implementation, etc. We are part of CATI, uh, but we focus exclusively on PLM solutions. So today's presentation, uh, we've got some key elements that we want to go over with you. Uh, this is an introduction to dispatch. Uh, the installation of dispatch because it does have an installation requirement, how you can access dispatch, and then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of creating creating actions, commands within the actions. Uh, we'll look at a number of different example actions to see it um, happening live, and then I'll give you some reference uh, locations with the reference guide and stuff. So. All right, first thing in this introduction to dispatch, uh, dispatch is macros for PDM, and it's really an out-of-the-box add-in for PDM. Uh, much like you have add-ins for SOLIDWORKS, PDM has a couple of add-ins, and dispatch is included with PDM Professional. If you have PDM Standard, this is not available to you uh, until you upgrade to PDM Professional. These are simple programming tools, and if you've tried to make any macros in SOLIDWORKS, the record button in SOLIDWORKS for the macros works really well, but the results are very specific to like that file. Uh, I found that the dispatch macros in PDM tend to be much more uh, easier to use and that they're a little more generic and that they work with different files very well right out of the right out of the chute. So if you're if you're a person who likes to experiment, I think you'll find this to be a little bit easier even than the SOLIDWORKS macros. These PDM dispatch actions, as they're called, um, are triggered by one of four different types of events. You can either run it from a menu, uh, you can run it from a state transition. So as you're transitioning a file, say, from uh, approved to released, you could run one of these actions. Or you can do it when a file is checked out or when a file is added to the vault itself. Some examples that you might use this for setting file names, setting or reading data card values, copying and moving files, creating folders, running shell commands. This is a really good place to start. Um, as I mentioned, SOLIDWORKS has, or SOLIDWORKS PDM has add-ins that are included. Uh, the convert task is one that's included with PDM Professional and then this dispatch. And you could go so far as to try to write your own add-in, and that's much more involved. So if you want to dip your toes, dispatch is the first place to start. Um, and as far as trade-offs go, dispatch has almost zero performance impact because it only runs when you either, again, run it from a menu, a state transition, a checkout, or an add to vault where the other add-ins that someone might create, uh, those are typically running constantly, waiting and listening, saying, hey, do you need me? So dispatch is definitely the first step in trying to tailor PDM a little bit more beyond uh, what you have currently maybe in your data cards and workflows as far as options go. So dispatch does require some installation um, in your vault. Under the add-ins, you would need to see dispatch listed there. If it's not there, you can add it in. You can actually do this from a client, which I think is kind of slick. Uh, you don't actually have to be on the server to do this, but you do have to have uh, browse to this location here in the program files on your local disk. You should see a dispatch.caf file, um, and you can import that, drag and open that up in the administration tool, and drag and drop it to add it to the add-ins, and once you're done with that, you should see it listed here like this. Uh, if when you expand your add-ins, you don't see dispatch there, then it's not installed anywhere in the vault. But once it's listed here, and again, you could install this from the client, um, this will be everywhere in the vault for everyone to access. Um, what you see here with the number behind that, behind here, behind the dispatch, and as well as the SOLIDWORKS task adding, which says the conversion and print task, um, is the, the year and then the service pack, so I'm on 2018 service pack 2. And that's important to keep an eye on because your version that you're actually running, it should match um, at least the major version, otherwise um, you may have some trouble getting that to even run in the first place. When we do an upgrade to PDM, um, the server side as well as the clients, these add-ins 
will never be updated automatically. These are left untouched in an upgrade, even on the server side, because there's potential that you're doing some customization with what's here. So during an upgrade process, this won't be automatically upgraded. It's a secondary step that the administrator, whoever's doing the upgrade, will have to make sure that they pay attention to specifically uh, upgrading. And in the installation guide, there's some information that talks about how to do this and kind of how to protect any of the customization you might have had with uh, things that were created previously. So if it's not there under add-ins, then again, you can go to anywhere PDM is installed and grab this dispatch file and open it with the administration tool and then drag and drop that into the add-ins. To add it. Once it's there, then we can go ahead and start um, accessing dispatch. And there's two different ways to start using it. Uh, one is from the administration tool. Um, if you right-click on dispatch itself, there will be a menu option to administrate actions. Or from the vault view, you can also go to the tools menu. There will be a drop-down for administrate actions. And the result is you get the administrate actions window where we can add, edit, remove, load, and manipulate the actions that we would want to run with dispatch. So again, if you right click on dispatch, administrate actions should come up. Or from your vault view, you go to tools, administrate actions, will pop up. And this is where we get started. So dispatch acts action creation. Um, we start with add or load depending on you know what you have. These dispatch actions can be uh, saved out, copy and reuse kind of thing. So um, if you find an example from somewhere from say a reseller like Inflow, you know we can give you some examples. You can load those and use those as starting points. Uh, but you can create them from scratch obviously. Uh, the add button is where we would start. The edit action comes up. This is where you get to give it a name of what your action is going to be called and maybe a description as far as uh, what you're going to say that it actually does. And then down below here, we have the activation options, how you're actually going to use this. And a lot of times, we'll see that we want those during a state transition. We want one of these to kick off and do something specific to a file or the files that are being transitioned but I would recommend that you maybe start with the menu command first so that you can uh, try it out and test it out without actually going through the transition, moving files around and around and around your workflow. Um, just tie it to a menu command, run it as you see fit until it works the way you want it to, and then once it's done, then you can do it during the state transition and you can hook it to your workflow. Uh, there is a variables button here for the action, and it's specifically for the actions, uh, the action that you're in. These variables have nothing to do with the variables that you would have in your PDM vault as far as uh, like data card variables or anything like that. This is totally separate, only, it's only for dispatch. So, so we got one here that started uh, showing me info for one file only. It's just a simple dispatch example tied to a menu. You can see here we've got dispatch with a slash. This is the submenu kind of thing that uh, PDM likes to use. So underneath the right-click menu, there'll be dispatch, and then there'll be this show me file info. And this is the same as the action name, but you actually have to type that in. So this could be whatever. You can just put the number one here. It doesn't match the action name. So they look the same right now because I just did that consistently. Um, down below here we have all the different commands uh, that would be in this particular action. Right now there's nothing and when we use the add button, the select command window comes up where you can select what kind of command that you want to use and this is a blown up version of it. Uh, so there's a lot of different commands to pick from. OK message box is where we're going to start. Uh, there are some, some other ones, yes no message box. Uh, copying file, checking out a file, checking in a file. So this is where you can get into some some nice stuff with PDM and that even if you don't currently have the files checked out, we can start linking other commands together so that it checks out the file so that it can modify something about the data card and then check the file back in afterwards. So we just kind of stack up these commands in the list here 
and if we stack them up the right way, we can get the kind of functions we're looking for. It does have an if-then-else kind of uh, function, but you can see here in the commands there's no if-then-else kind of thing. It does have jump and label, which is really your if-then. So jump is where it does the if command and, and, and moves on, and label is where it would go to kind of thing. And we'll show some of that. Um, but these are the commands, and it, it's not a great big list, but you, you'd be surprised what you can pull off with what's here. Um, but if this doesn't get you what you're looking for, then that might be that you're asking for something a little bit more involved than just dispatch. But this is a great place, again, to start. So in this case, we've used the OK message box. We're making our first, back up here, our first command. We actually picked the OK message box after we picked the add command. And just type in some text, full file path, colon. And then we can use the predefined variable drop down options here to select information. Like from file variables, I would like the path to the selected file. So the idea is with this dispatch action, um, I would have a file selected when I run the dispatch action. And then um, it could grab the path information from the selected file. And we're going to start out real simple and just display some information, and then we'll kind of build up as we go along here. So this same OK message box here with the full file path I had just a second ago, I picked the variable from the list here, and it put in the percent path to selected file percent. After you use this a bunch, you know, you start to realize you may be able to actually type that, but we do have the shortcuts so you don't have to know that syntax. So you just pick that little arrow and pick the right item from the menu here and you get, get the information you're looking for. And then we did like a carriage return and put full file name and file name without extension and file extension just to show some other examples. And each of those was picked from the menu drop downs here. So we didn't have to type anything but the first part of it, like up to the colon and hit enter at the end. So once the message box is filled out to our liking, uh, clicked OK, and it adds it to the list here as the first command. So dispatch action, in this case, only has one command, but it can have many, and it'll end up scrolling, and they can get kind of involved and start using the variables, which we'll get to. But we're going to start out simple, like I said. So this one is just going to show me info for one file only. So with this, we pick OK, and it shows up in the administrative actions list. It uses this information as far as where it's going to exist and how it would be initiated or launched. So I would right click, select the file in my vault view, right click on dispatch, say show me file info for one file, and I should get this kind of information back. So let's take a look at that. So in my administrate actions, you can see I already have this one here started. If we look at that a little bit closer, here it is in the list. It's just an OK message box. This content here is what was in that box. If we edit that, we can see that a little bit better. It's the same thing from the slides. Up here, the menu command, dispatch, and then the submenu, show me the information. So with that, we'll go ahead and use it. Cancel out of this. We'll go pick a particular file. And if we right click, we should see a dispatch menu because I created that. Here's my action. And when I select it, it now shows me the information for that particular file. So full file path, full file name, uh, file name without the extension, file name, or just the file extension. And, you know, the file name without extension is probably you know something you might want to be using for something else. So uh, by, by reading this and showing this information, it's just starting to scratch the surface of getting some information from, um, from the interface. So if we go to another file here and run it again, we should get some different information about this particular file. So not too complicated. Keep it simple first, right? Um, question here is permissions to access this. Do you need any specific permissions or anything? Not really. Dispatched is, is available in the menu to everybody as soon as you turn on that check mark that it's a menu item. Now, if they don't have access to the file because they can't read it, or the folder, they can't read what's in there, then they obviously can't run it against that file. Uh, if the file is in a state, 
um, say, work in progress, and you, they don't have access to files in work in progress, so then they couldn't run it on that file either. Um, if it deals with the transition, if you've linked this to a transition already and they can't push a file through that transition, like bypass approval, uh, if they're not trustable people who can bypass approval, then they wouldn't have access to it either. So it is pretty much wide open that they can run it against files that they have access to as long as they have the folder permission and the state permission or if you put it into the transition, um, that actual transition state, um, change state option, then, then they can run it. So there's not a way to limit access through like group permissions or user permissions to say, well, the only person who can run this dispatch action is me because I'm still playing around with it. It's out there. So the quickest way to make it unavailable is to uncheck that menu option and pull it out, then it wouldn't be there anymore. Um, but it becomes widely available immediately, which is a little, a little scary, but I got a solution for that a little bit later here that I'll show you. So I'm going to show you some different examples. Uh, we already did the first one to show you info for one file. I'm going to take it up a notch and say, well, I'd like to see info for more than one file. Typically, we run a, want to run an action on more than a single file at a time. So how do we handle that? And then we'll kind of work our way up from there. And I'm going to load these because I've already got them created. Make life a little bit easier for myself. So back to your tools, administrate actions, and I'm going to load the next one. That way I don't have to write all this again. So here I have show me file info number two for all selected files. Again, it's description is simple dispatch example plus a little extra. I'm going to run it from a menu command and I'm going to put it in the same dispatch menu and then I'm just going to call it the same name here. Now you see instead of one command, there's three. This was the one we had before. It's exactly the same. I just reused it except now that I've added a command before this that says for all documents. See, there's nothing to even edit there. It's just the command block start and then there's the one to close it out of the block, the block end. So for all documents, and then end. So this kind of does the little looping feature for everything that's selected. And you can see we can move these up and down, which would kind of mess up the orientation in this case on my part if I actually left it where I moved it. Put that back. Um, so you can go and add those. We did the block for all documents kind of thing. Just by selecting that, starts another one. Right? You need that there, but you get the idea. Move that. So from the previous one, we just had the message box, and now we've got the for all and end all to do the looping. So click OK. Adds it to the list here for us. And now I'll select like the first three files here, four files. And with those selected, you know, if you watch the way I select them, I'm selecting them in order for a reason. So I want to show you that when I right click go to dispatch and I can pick from my other one here for all selected files. Uh, it's number four, which is actually the fourth one I selected. So it's showing me all that information. I pick OK. It goes to the next one and jump to one. I go to the next one, it goes to two and to three. But I picked them in numerical order. And the point is, is it doesn't necessarily present them back to you in the order in which you selected them. So a little pro tip to watch out for there is that may not follow the selection order, so keep an eye out for that. But you can see it just looped through the files that were selected, and now I'm on the last one. I think, okay, it just goes away, because all it's doing is showing me some information. So pretty simple to add to that first one to build the looping process, which is the blocks uh, for all documents for block start and block end. Okay. So let's take it up a notch from here. This one's a little bit different. <clears throat> take a look at this. So this one is going to set the comment value on a data card from a drop list. Okay, so we're going to present the user with a list of options to put in the comment box because it's low risk. Uh, anything you're doing in PDM as far as an administrator goes, you should always take into account in terms of risk. If what you're doing is risky, you should probably be doing it in a test vault, not a production vault what you're doing is low risk, maybe you could do that in a production vault. So I'm just dealing with the comment here. So again, uh, this is going to 
start a block here. So for all documents that are selected, we're going to present this combo box, which was a command that was added from the drop-down list. Um, we have a prompt string that just I just typed in, please select one of the values below for the file. And then uh, it's going to present me the name of the file so I know which one I'm dealing with. And then I'm using a template variable, number one, keeping it simple, uh, that I'm going to pick up the value that the user selects, choices one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we'll put today in here on this one, so you know it's actually today's. Um, and then we're going to set that card variable here. So there's an action to do that. So it's going to take the variable one value that we just picked up, and it's going to set that into the comment variable. So this is the variable on the card. So now we're going back to the variables that are actually in your data card. Again, the variables here of this template variable, it's just a runtime it only exists in the dispatch for the time that it's running. And then it's going to loop through for the following files. So if we pick OK to this, we pick a couple of these files and we try to run that. Dispatch, set comment value. And before I do that, let me show you the data card. It might make a little bit more sense. So I got a comment value here on all of these that's blank. And I want to kind of fill it in. Okay, so I highlight both of those. It's got more than one dispatch. Set comment value from the drop list. Let's please select one of the values below for number two. Okay, so two will make a choice to there's today. Okay, I go and pick OK. It fails. You must check out the file before this command can run. You can't change the data card value because it's not a version free variable. You actually have to have it checked out. Now it's going to ask me for the first one, and it's going to fail also because I don't have it checked out. So let me go get those checked out first. Check out, check out. So now I own those two. Let's go ahead and run the dispatch again. Okay, for number two, we'll make it choice two. And for number one, we'll make it choice one. Okay. And if we look at the data cards now, they should be filled in. Number one has choice one. Number two has choice two. And then it's up to me to go back and check them back in. And now they're done. The catch is I had to go check those out. So next example, we want to add to this. I'm going to load another one where it will actually do the checkout for me. Okay. So in this one, it's the same sequences, but now we've got checkout with path to selected file from the block or the for all documents. And it's going to do the same combo box, the variable OK message. It's going to actually confirm for me what it's doing. I want it to tell me that the template variable for the file that was selected is actually being set. <clears throat> and then it's going to check in the file. And in here, I've got a comment that goes in on the check-in saying I'm auto-checked in via dispatch after setting comment. And I'm actually going to put that template variable in there even so the comment tells me exactly what I did to that file with this dispatch tool. And then it'll loop. So this one becomes a whole lot more friendly. So um, let's do one through five here. Some of those weren't done before. Some of them were. Uh, none of them are checked out. I don't own any of those, but dispatch uh, with checkout from the drop list. So for choice one, or I'm sorry, for file number five, we'll set them all to choice five. Now this was a new dispatch action that I loaded, so it didn't have the modification in choice five that I made in the previous one. I'm just loading these to build up on them because it's a little bit easier to play with them that way. So I'll set everything to choice five for each file. So here it says choice five for file number five was set. It's going to go to the next one. This is number one. We'll set it to five, confirming that it did that. And let's keep looking through here for the files. There's two. Here's three. And number four should be the last one. And you didn't really see anything happen there. But if we come and look at the files in the data card, they should all have choice five on them, where previously, like these other files, they were all blank. And if we look at the history of the file, we can see that <clears throat> it was checked in. A new version was created because the variable was changed. Auto checked in via dispatch after setting comment to choice five. If we look back at this one, we will see in the history that here was when I did the checkout and check-in previously, but there was nothing going on because when I checked it in, I checked it in manually and I didn't put a comment in. So 
So I have the dispatch putting in the comment automatically because useful comments become very helpful. So um, I think I got one more example here to show you in the time we got left. Not add load. All right, and this one is with the password. So I mentioned that there's no way to control permissions to access the dispatch actions from the menu. If you add it to the menu, everyone can get at it and run against the files they have access to. Excuse me. Uh, what I did here with this one, as you can see, it's getting a bit longer, but I've got basically the if then else going on with the jump. So first thing it's going to do is it's going to give you an edit box and ask you for a password. And then here's the if statement. If this template variable for password uh, doesn't equal the template variable password answer, then we're going to go to jump label wrong password and basically skip all the things that we would normally do. This is what we were doing in the last several ones all combined. Here's where it block starts. Here's where it checks out the file and it asks you for your choice. And set the variable, confirm that, check in the file, and then loop back around for the next selected file. Okay. So this is the if statement, and it can jump um, if always and go to jump wrong password message kind of thing here. So if we look at uh, variables, you can see that I have, there's the variable one from the previous. Uh, here's my answer. That's my actual password. Um, it's the runtime variable to ask for it. So let's give that a, a run here. So we'll just take like this one almost equal to these files. So I'll go to dispatch and I'll use the one with the password. And if I put in the wrong password, something, one problem with this is the password is free and clear. I haven't figured out a way to get it to be like stars or anything. So if somebody watches you type the password, they would get it. But this is a little way to permit to prevent other people from running it. So we put in something wrong. It says, nope, that's not the password. And that's actually my syntax. You can change that however you like. So you can get a little silly with it. Um, but if I come in and put the right one in there, which was in flow, convenient. Right. So now I can go and pick, and we'll do choice four on these. Four for number seven, four for number eight. Okay. And then it just ends. And now we should see that these have choice four, and it would also show up in the history. So that's a little teaser into dispatch, what it does and how it works. Uh, it does require the installation. So um, those are hopefully some examples to kind of get you excited about it and let you see what it is. Um, your admin guide, the, the administration guide for PDM has a chapter here specifically on dispatch. And there are a couple of uh, examples on the DVD or the full download under SOLIDWORKS PDM Client Support Dispatch, dispatch examples. Um, so that's, that's a good reference, a place to start. So we covered introduction, um, dispatch installation, adding in the add-in, accessing it through um, either the administrate actions from the dispatch and the admin tool or from the tools menu in the vault view, and then creation of the commands and running them and give you some examples. So at this point, we got a couple minutes left for any questions. I haven't seen any come across yet from Brian. So. Um, uh, yeah, Jim, this is Brian. Uh, no questions from anybody. Uh, and if you're satisfied, we certainly thank you for joining us today. Um, this is our big month for innovation. So hopefully you've seen some of the other ones. I think there's a few more that are still going on. Uh, check our website for that. All right. Uh, I think people are exiting the meeting, Jim, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and sign off. And uh, uh, again, if we do have any other questions, you guys can get a hold of us. CATI.com is the website. And um, looks like we're good. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thanks, Brian.